Hi, and welcome to Her Business, where we interview inspiring businesswomen and entrepreneurs. I'm Susie Daphnis of the Australian Business Women's Network. My guest today is Amanda Fisher, author of Unscramble Your Numbers. Hi, this is Susie, and today we're with Amanda Fisher, author of Unscramble Your Numbers. Now, if you want to better understand your business numbers, if you want to take control of your cash flow, and if you want to grow your business, then you're going to really enjoy today's episode. Amanda is a speaker, trainer, mentor that helps business owners to understand their numbers. She focuses on education and helps business owners make sense of those numbers. She's really able to distill complicated accounting principles into easy to understand English. In this interview, we're going to talk about how the numbers got scrambled in the first place and what that might look like in your business. We're going to talk about some of the biggest finance mistakes that most small business owners make and where to get started if you're not on top of your finances, but you're really committed to growing your business. Now, just before we go into the interview, I want to talk about the F word, finances. Now, when I started my business, my background was marketing. I really didn't know a lot about finances. And for a while, I thought I'd be able to skate through anyway, because my business partner was great with money and with numbers. But what became really obvious is that I couldn't really take ownership of my results and my future without getting a grasp on the financials. I had to stop abdicating responsibility and really take control. Let's go to the interview with Amanda and after that I'll tell you what I did to empower myself and to turn my business results around. You'll find information and links to the references made in this interview on our website at abn.org.au forward slash unscramble. Amanda, hi and welcome to the program. Thank you. Hi, Susie. So great to be to be here and talking with you today. Today we're talking about the F word, finances. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and specifically your book, Unscramble Your Numbers, Unlock the Secrets to Your Business Cash Flow. Now, before we get into the guts of the book, tell us how this, which is your second book, came about. The I think what's happened is after over the last few years, because we've got cloud technology working and, and uh, cloud accounting systems in place for a lot of people, they're getting their figures up to date more often. They're not waiting for the end of the quarter for the bookkeeper to come in. Mm -hmm. And what that means is they're seeing these numbers, but now they don't really know what to do with them or what they necessarily mean. And that's really why I wrote the book to try and help to unscramble those numbers so people can understand a little bit more about what those numbers are at a very simple level. Great. And, you know, the title of your book is great, Unscramble Your Numbers, and you've given us some very good reasons. And now that our accounting software is online and in the cloud, that's causing some confusion. But is there something else that's making numbers scrambled for business owners generally? I think generally, you know, most, most women go into business because they've got a great idea, they want flexibility of their working hours, um, you know, they don't want to have a boss anymore, all sorts of those types of reasons. But none of them go into business because they're bookkeepers or accountants or because they necessarily like and have an affinity for numbers. And I think what happens is that they, we go into business thinking we're going to do well, etc., without having that basic layer of the finance. Okay, there's three kind of pillars of the business, the finance, the marketing and the and the doing of the business itself. And I think, you know, as I think is quite often through the ABN um, information that's provided through the network is there's a lot focused on the marketing area because it is a big area that's missing for most people. But the unspoken one is the finance one, which people just don't really want to talk about. Well, I'm glad we're talking about it today and you bring up a good point. And, you know, when we ask our community about their finances, um, it's not, not always something people want to talk about. And, and that's usually because there's either confusion or the numbers don't look that great and they're struggling with lumpy cash flow or very uh, low cash flow. They don't know how to or don't have a budget. Just recently we put something in our, we've got a private group for premium members of which you're a member and so you'll know about it and it's coming up right as we're recording coming up to the end of financial year and so I put in there you know who's kind of working on their budget for the new year silence <laughs> and and it's disappointing but I totally understand and that's why we're here to help and that's why you've written a book like this so tell me what are the biggest mistakes you see business owners make when it comes to their finances 
I think the biggest thing is, in the first instance, thinking that the only reason you need to do your financial numbers is to report to the tax man. And that has been historically what's the case. But the, the numbers can be used to make business decisions if you have accurate figures up to date at the time. So I think the first mistake is considering it's only there for the tax man and not using the current technology. The second big mistake that I find is failing to set financial goals. Mm. So actually, And even the simple ones of I want to turn over, have sales of 50,000 or 100,000 this month or months, or I want to get two new clients in, or, you know, it doesn't need to be full-blown budgets, although preferably it is, but at a simple level, just even a few of those targets that you set for yourself, because like anything, if you actually have a goal, it's amazing actually how how you we achieve them if we have them set. Um, and I think the third thing is not then looking at how you're going and, and, and taking that time just once a month to look at the results, see whether or not you hit those targets, whatever those were, and pat yourself on the back and give yourself a gold star when you do and give yourself some momentum to keep going. Or if you don't look at why it didn't quite make it to the goal you set and you know what was the reasons for it, and act, then act on those that information to then move forward. Um, and I just find that, you know, the women that I work with that do that, their businesses are just improving month on month on month, whereas those that just kind of ignore it and hope things will improve and it will get better and they're busy, 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 seem to still get the same result. You bring up so many great points. And just to go back to that writing down your financial goals and doing a budget. I think with anything in business, if it's there, then you know if you've reached it or not. If you're not tracking your numbers, how do you know if you're moving ahead? And, you know, your goal, you mentioned 50 to 100,000 a month, it could be 50,000 in a year. You know, you're just starting out. It could be, you know, just, you might be starting from a very low base and you want by the end of the year to be replacing your salary of the job that you left a year ago. But if you don't have that marker in the ground, um, then how will you know if you're getting there? And in your book, you recommend that we actually write them down. Correct. And I think, you know, one of the things when, when, when we start out in business in those very early days, you know, that first market to aim for is to get over the GST threshold of $75,000 of income because once you're over that threshold, you actually kind of feel that you're really in business. And I think... Part of the reason we don't like to talk about the numbers is we don't want to actually have to confess to other people that we are below the, the, the GST threshold or we, you know, that we're not doing as well on the outside. We all look very professional and successful, but what's going on behind the scenes is, is a completely different story. And it, and it is one that comes with a bit of embarrassment and shame and, and all sorts of other emotions that come up, which make you want to kind of keep that very private to yourself mm. and that is a challenge that I faced working in a in a more public environment on these sorts of numbers is get people in a room together they don't want to talk about it because it's their private thing and who wants to confess to another group of of, of people that you're actually not doing as well as you look like you're doing. Okay that mm. is a great point and the thing is that if we bury our head in the sand or we don't talk about it, that's not going to get us any better at it. So Correct. it's finding who, and I'll ask you in a moment about, you know, who should we be talking to about our finances? But one other thing I wanted to ask you, because I really believe that you can master anything that you understand. So understanding a language um, allows you to get mastery in that language. And what I mean is I understand the language of marketing pretty well. And if you do, then you understand call to actions and opt-ins and lead magnets and landing pages and, you know, that language. And learning the language of finance is, is for some people a brand new thing. Now, what are some of the basics every business owner should know about their numbers? The basics in, uh, I think, I look at what I call the three T's and it's something I've, I've, I've coined just recently mm-hmm. and that's transactions, turnover and take home. And it's looking at how many transactions are you doing and that might be how many sales have you got, how many, diff- how many clients you're working with, depending on the type of business, what the transaction numbers are. They then re- 
sort of flow into what the turnover is, which is sales or revenue or income. The problem with accounting is we have 10 different words that all basically mean the same thing, Mm. um, which also confuses everybody. And I think the big thing is what's your take home and getting that take home to be a priority and not kind of what's left in the bank account at the end of the day. Um, And that's an important part where I see too many women in business where they're paying everything else and then getting to the end of the month and there's nothing left in the bank account for them and feeling like they've, you know, been doing all this work and there's nothing much for them. Uh, and and that's not what it's about. It is about, you know, getting financial fulfilment out of, of the business at the same time. So those are uh, the sort of starting numbers I think that people need to think about. And... It's just getting that initial understanding of how the numbers work. What's an expense? What's capital? What's what's deductible for tax purposes? What isn't deductible for tax purposes? And it there's there's a lot in it. But like marketing, there's a lot in marketing too. And it's it's putting the time and effort into some education around those numbers. In a moment, I'm going to ask you where we should go for that education. Obviously, we want to pick up a copy of this book. But if we're in a hole around our finances, and that could be um, we've got a lot of money that's owed to us that we haven't collected. It could be we have no idea of when the next check is coming in. That's an old word, check, isn't it? Um, (laughs) (laughs) You don't um, see many of those these days, no. You know, when the next lot of income is coming in. If we're in a hole or we're just so confused that we've been burying our head, where do we start? I think the first point of call is to find a really good, compassionate accountant who can steer you along the path of getting some of those numbers under control. Now, it might also be a bookkeeper, depending upon the bookkeeper. Uh, some of the bookkeepers are a bit are more capable than just doing kind of what I call the data entry. Um, but it's really putting your hand up and saying, hey, I need some help. I, I see people come to me, which scares the life out of me, mm. that haven't done their, haven't lodged a BAS return, haven't lodged a tax return for three or four years, buried in their head in the sand, have no idea what's going on, managed to survive, like, you know, but done nothing. Uh, and we start to pull back and, and put in an automated accounting system to pull the history up to date and, and get it kind of up to date. But if the whole's one of, and it's kind of the chicken for the egg exercise where you've got, you're in a financial hole, you need help, but you're in a financial hole, which means you can't afford the help, Mm. but then you can't afford not to have the help. And it's it's this, you know, uh, really awkward situation to be in. But but spending a little bit of money to get someone to help you and and to, to identify what you need to be focusing on will pay itself off in spades because if you are in a hole, then if you don't know how to deal with it, you've got to get professional advice to get you out of it. Mm. And, you know, and you make a great point. So it's meeting with your accountant and then it's, you know, making sure you're getting educated. And there are a lot of resources available to get you started. And you'll, you know, depending on where you're at, you're going to need different levels of education. One of the things that really helped me, uh, because I, I was telling you before we started recording, my background's in marketing. So when I started my business, finances wasn't really something I wanted to get my head around. But I knew that if I was going to be in business for the long term, I'd better figure out how to make it work for me. And so our financial advisors and our our bookkeepers and our accountants have been really key to that. But also having a dashboard, a summary that I could look at on a daily basis, but also on a monthly basis. And I know there's a lot of talk about, you know, business metrics and dashboards and key performance indicators for financial, but without going too far down that uh, rabbit hole for people who might (laughs) just be starting out, you know, what are the key metrics that we should be looking at? I think the, 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 there is a lot of terminology around all that and, and if you think of a dashboard on a car, it's got, well, the old ones did, they have a, you know, the, uh, they've got the speedometer, they've got um, some other rev meter, you know, they've got these various different dials. I think some of the newer cars are all, all a bit kind of number, digital numbers, but the old cars had the dials and that's basically what a dashboard is. And the beauty of a lot of the dashboards that are available today is you can 
um, customise them to exactly suit your business. So depending upon the business depends upon what the numbers are that to the numbers or the metrics, but the numbers to keep it simple are that you focus on. Yeah, you know, one of the big ones has always got to be what's what's your turnover, what's the revenue. Uh, if you sell what you sell uh, invoicing, then looking at what your accounts receivable, how much money is outstanding, when's it due in. That's obviously an important number because it will determine when you've next got money in the bank account. Um, but it's also looking at specific ones that are individual to the business, and it may include should include, in fact, some marketing numbers as well. How many leads have you got? What's your, what's your conversion on your leads? Um, those types of numbers come into it as well. So it's not just the, the financial numbers that are important to be watching on a dashboard, but it's also what are the marketing numbers that you need to be focusing on. If you know, if you, if you know you've got to talk to 10 people to get one client on board to get a $200 sale, then how many 10 people are you talking to to get that one sale? Um, those numbers are, are just as important mm. as how much money is in the bank and how much money is owed to you and are you making your profit margin uh, in terms of the markup on the cost of what you're selling, whether it's hours or widgets, that, that you're actually making a, a profit out of the sale price compared to the cost. Mm. One of the things that I found um, really helps is to be accountable to someone for um, what we're doing in our business around numbers. And ultimately, we're responsible for our results. But how do we set up ways to be held accountable for mastering our money? I think there's there's a number of ways that uh, that work really well. At, and for most of us, the, the accountability is best with somebody else, somebody who's not in the business, right. who you arrange a regular, probably monthly get together, whether it's phone or Skype or in person, doesn't matter. Um, accountants do do it. Some accountants do do it. Uh, bookkeepers do it. Uh, I'm I'm out uh, creating what I call a new a new little industry called financial coaches or financial mentors. And it's one of the things I do where I, I will sit down once a month with uh, the, the owner of the business and look at what those numbers are, how they're tracking, uh, and start to give some advice on where to go from there. So there's two sides on the accountability. One is having just even a, a friend who might be a sounding board that you say, you know, this is what I'm planning for the month. Can you check in on me at the end of the month and see how well I went? And that's just a, 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 a hmm. just keep you on track kind of accountability. The, you know, the next level up is having someone who has expertise around it who can say, yes, it's okay, how have you gone? How are you keeping on track? And now let's look at what's gone wrong, what's gone well, what, what's going to be happening in the next coming month, how can you improve it, how can you change it, uh, and getting that advice level at the same time as being being held accountable. And I think, you know, there's those, sort of the two levels depending upon uh, where you're up to in, in your business as to what works. Okay, great. Well, we're going to give you on details so that they can uh, be in contact with you. Con big congratulations on the book. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Is there anything you'd like to leave us with? I think the main thing is don't be afraid of the new technology that's around. Embrace it. Get your accounts up to date automatically, easily. Set those financial goals and put aside a time once a month, even if it's just 20 minutes, half an hour, once a month to look at your numbers and just see how you're tracking. The book is Unscramble Your Numbers, Unlock the Secrets to Your Business Cash Flow. Amanda, thank you so much for being with us. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Her Business with Amanda Fisher, author of Unscramble Your Numbers. You can learn more about Amanda at amandafisher.com.au. We'll also put links on our show notes page on our website at abn.org.au forward slash unscramble. As I mentioned earlier, finances have not always been my favourite thing. I didn't understand the difference between income statements and balance sheets, revenue and cash flow. I didn't understand much at all about numbers, really. If I were to ask you today how you'd classify your cash flow, would you say that you're not really sure, that you're not tracking it? 
or that it's highly erratic and quite lumpy and it's actually a bit of a headache. Or perhaps you're managing to keep things ticking along most of the time. What if it could be reliable and predictable and enough to cover expenses? And what if you had so much cash flow that you were not only covering your costs, but you had plenty in reserve? For the first few years in business, finance was a whole new language, one that I didn't understand and that caused me a lot of confusion. So where I started was I started to study the basics. What does it cost to open my doors each day? Now, Just because I was working from home, just because I didn't have any staff, it didn't mean it didn't cost me anything. It cost me what I would have been earning in a job. It cost me lost opportunities. What I wanted to know was how much do I need to earn and how much do I need to have left over at the end of the day so that I know that I can grow my business, so I can afford my first virtual assistant or my first staff member. What's an expense? What is a cost of sales? What does it really cost to do business? So I sat with a bookkeeper and I asked a lot of questions. We looked at the numbers as they were, the reality of them, and went through it line by line. It wasn't pretty. And then I asked her if she could put together some reports that were going to make sense to me for my needs. I wanted to see exactly how I was tracking compared to last month and last year. I wanted the numbers to be broken down by different business activities so that I could see where we were bleeding and what was really working. I didn't want to spend time doing things that weren't reaping a reward, but I actually, until I looked at the numbers and where what was costing what, I really didn't know what was working. I forced myself to do a budget and the first budget was really painful. Everyone after that has been much, much easier. And then every month I checked how I did that month against the budget. In some ways, it didn't really matter if I met the income I'd budgeted for. What I did know was what was happening in my business, and I was no longer hiding from the truth. I could tell if I was spending too much money or earning too little. I could make smarter decisions at the drop of a hat. If you don't really know what's going on in your business, you can't make the decisions that will really move your business forward because you're operating in the dark. We really need to pay as much attention to bringing money in as to how we use it when it does come in and also making sure we collect it when others owe it to us. I encourage you to make a commitment to get started getting yourself a financial mentor, sitting with your accountant or bookkeeper or picking up Amanda's book. It's the end of financial year as we release this episode of Her Business and I'd love for you to commit to making a change in this new year. Finances is still not my favourite thing. I'd sooner have my head buried in a marketing campaign any day, but I've got them under control and that focus has made the biggest difference to my business and the profitability of that business. If you enjoyed this episode of Her Business, we'd really appreciate it if you would tell your friends. We want to share the great ideas that our guests bring to these interviews with as many people as possible. If you're listening on iTunes or Stitcher, be sure to subscribe to automatically receive new episodes of Her Business and to access the library of past episodes. We've got over 100 in the library now. We'd also love it if you would leave us a rating or a review. On behalf of the Australian Business Women's Network, I want to thank you so much for joining us here on Her Business and I look forward to welcoming you back really, really soon. Thanks for listening.